Welcome to the course on VLSI Physical Design with Timing Analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about different clock routing algorithms. The content of this lecture includes problem formulation for clock routing. Then we will discuss about some of the clock routing algorithm. For example, most popular H tree based algorithm. So, first of all, we will discuss about this uh, uh, pro how we can formulate the problem for uh, basically clock routing. We have uh, basically zero skew problem means we want uh, the skew is basically we have discussed in the uh, lecture number uh, 12 regarding uh, skew. Okay, if you if you uh, have not gone through that lecture, please go and revisit the lecture number 12. The skew is basically we want uh, the clock skew should be ideally 0. So, if the clock tree exhibit a 0 skew, then it is called a 0 clock skew or ZST. And given a set S of sync locations, we need to construct ZST of T of S with minimum cost. Okay. In this context, a, a connection topology G is also given. Now we will discuss about the bounded skew problem. Okay. So, the, the bounded skew problem uh, due to manufacturing uh, variation or process variation. So, the both the transistors and the interconnect will uh, basically have uh, variation in its behavior. So, this variation of its behavior will translate to the variation in the delay in the interconnects and the uh, delay of the logic gates. In actual case, it is not possible to get a zero clock skew. So, there should be some bound on the clock skew. Okay. So, in practical clock tree routing does not uh, typically achieve exact zero skew, but it has a range of the skew. So, in this case, we have uh, uh, given a set S of sync locations. Sync locations are the locations of the flip flops and the latches where our clock is going to be connected. Then we have a skew bound u of b which is a greater than 0. We need to construct uh, the clock tree uh, t of s with the skew which is bounded by uh, t of s basically should be less than equals to uh, u b having minimum cost. Minimum cost is uh, cost of the delay through the cl clock tree or interconnect delay those uh, delays should be as minimum as possible. Because whenever you are inserting the buffers in the clock tree, that will also consume some amount of power. So, this cost will include all uh, the delay through the interconnect, power consumption through the buffers, all these into account. So, now we have uh, something called useful skew problem. So, basically whenever we are uh, looking for this uh, clock uh, or, uh, tree routing problem, okay, if you are using the global concept of uh, optimizing the skew, okay, it is not a good idea. Okay, it is not a good idea because the useful skew information is based on the analysis of the local skew constraints. Okay, so uh, basically, we need to um, look into the local skew constraint while uh, basically analyzing the skew instead of uh, dealing this one as a global problem. So now uh, uh, we'll introduce the useful skew in a uh, clock tree by uh, perturbing the clock arrival times at the sync nodes. We will uh, see that how much uh, clock arrival time is changing at each of the sync nodes. So, uh, clock skew is basically a special variation because of the location of the, um, let us say I have a chip, I have flip flops sitting here. So, the arrival time of the clock at all the flip flop is different. So, because of the space position of the flip flop inside the chip, the clock can arrive at each of the nodes at different time, each of the nodes at a different time. So, based on that, based on that we can define the clock skew, based on that we can define the clock skew. So, the arrival time different uh, difference between the uh, two flip flops will translate to the clock skew. These are the basically the sync nodes actually, these are the sync nodes. All the flip flops and the latches are the sync nodes. Then we are either minimizing the clock period or maximizing the uh, maximizing the safety margin whenever we are discussing about the useful skew problem. 
we will discuss with one example here. So, basically we have discussed about the clock skew in the previous uh, lecture 12, but for uh, uh, reference I am just writing the uh, two equation max constant equation and the mean constant equation for the positive skew. So, I am discussing this one for the positive skew. Okay. So, you are uh, uh, max max uh, constant equation is the, uh, which is basically determining your time period. So, your t clock should be greater than equals to t clock to q, t clock to q maximum plus t combinational maximum plus t setup minus delta minus delta this delta is your basically clock skew here the defined delta is your clock skew. So, similarly the mean uh, constraint uh, which is for the hold uh, violation hold violation. So, that is uh, detected by your uh, basically T hold plus delta should be T hold uh, plus delta should be less than equals to T clock to Q minimum plus T combinational minimum. Okay. So, these are the uh, two equations which is useful uh, for uh, doing the timing analysis and here we are using the same concept uh, in a different uh, manner. If you can see we will consider the case 1. Okay. This is the uh, first approach, this is the approach 1. So, if you can see you have flip flop 1 and flip flop 2 and flip flop 3 same time we are getting the clock. Okay. And uh, here uh, uh, to do the analysis simplified uh, the clock to q delay and the setup time is ignored. Basically this clock to uh, q delay and setup time is ignored in this analysis. Similarly, cl the clock to q minimum is also ignored in the analysis. So, but uh, where, what is the time period between the flip flop 1 and flip flop 2 is de denoted by the p. Okay. So, this is the time period should be greater than equals to 2 nanosecond is the delay because of the combinational delay. What is this combinational delay is coming? 2 nanosecond minus skew is 0 here. Okay. Skew is 0 here. So, it is 2 nanosecond. And, uh, and in the second case between the flip flop 2 and flip flop 3, the uh, time period is should be greater than equals to this is the 6 nanosecond. This is the 6 nanosecond. So, this comes to be 6 nanosecond and the skew is 0. Uh, so, your uh, time period is 6 nanosecond. So, we need to uh, satisfy both the constraint. So, your our time period should be greater than equals to 6 nanosecond. This is a uh, concept called useful skew concept. So, what it is doing is that you are giving the uh, uh, flip flop 2 with 0 skew, okay. but the flip flop 1 is getting at time t equals to 2 nanosecond. So, skew is delta in this case is minus 2. Delta in this case is basically uh, 0 minus 2, it is minus 2 in this case nanosecond. And if I uh, if I use here 2 nanosecond minus minus 2 nanosecond, it will be 4 nanosecond. This is a negative skew. In this case, it is a negative skew. In flip between flip flop 1 and flip flop 2, it is basically a negative skew. And between flip flop 2 and flip flop 3, okay, this is a positive skew. So, the time period will be 6 nanosecond minus 2, it is comes out to be 4 nanosecond. So, he, this type of uh, skew is basically useful because in the earlier case my time period maximum time period is uh, basically set to be 6 nanosecond now in the um, approach 1, in the approach 2, okay, in the approach to my time period is basically uh, equals to 4 nanosecond. So, my since the time period is less my speed will be higher. So, this concept of uh, skew is called uh, useful for 
improving the speed of the, the design. So, to, uh, to avoid zero clocking or setup violation basically we have the same con uh, equation whatever we discussed in this uh, equation the same equation was written here this is the max uh, uh, constant equation. So, here what is the, uh, there is a, your setup time is there ok setup time is there this max is basically this max i comma j basically the uh, longest path in the combinational logic actually between the flip flop 1 and flip flop 2 and uh, this x i minus x j x j minus x i is your delta delta is basically arrival time of the flip flop uh, at flip flop j which is x j minus x i. So, this is your skew. So, if you can uh, write uh, this one. So, this is uh, this is the final equation ok. So, x i to consider the worst case condition we should consider the latest time at which the clock is can arrive at flip flop 1 ok. Since this is the latest time and uh, uh, for uh, for uh, for flip flop j flip flop j I have to take the early arrival time ok. So, early uh, I have to check for the early arrival time because I am considering the worst case. So, the clock signal should arrive to the uh, x, uh, x i uh, basically in late this is a late arrival and here it is a early arrival. So, this is uh, this will create a uh, worst case conditions. So, now this uh, equation is coming from the, the, the same previous equation whatever I explained here ok. So, and t clock to q is not uh, uh, taken into account. So, our previous equation is t clock should be greater than equals to t clock to q maximum plus t combinational maximum plus t setup minus delta ok. Your delta is basically x j minus x i ok. So, here in this uh, thing the t clock is your p ok should be greater than equals to this one is ignored and uh, then you have t combinational maximum plus t setup and delta is basically x j minus x i. So, if I simplify this one this will comes out to be p plus p plus x j should be greater than equals to t combinational maximum plus t setup please plus x i plus x i. So, this is this expression and this expression such the same ok p is your time period t uh, these two expressions are the uh, same. Now, uh, we can uh, do the same thing for the hold ok. So, hold is basically your t hold t hold plus delta should be less than equals to t clock to q minimum plus t combinational minimum ok. Now, what is happening here is that your t hold plus uh, x j minus x i x j minus x i should be less than equal to t clock to q minimum plus t combinational minimum. So, now if you simplify this uh, then you will get uh, so t hold plus x j ok should be less than equals to x i uh, plus uh, this is x i plus t combinational minimum here in this expression this one is uh, basically not considered for simplicity it is not considered for simplicity. So, these two equations are uh, now same. Uh, so, this is uh, a different uh, way of representing the clock skew. So, here what is the case is that for worst case conditions x i should arrive early because I am checking the same rising edge of the clock to see that whether there is a race condition happening or not. So, the x i should come early and x j should come late ok. So, this will come early. Now, there will be some buffer or something is there. So, that will come late 
So, this uh, age should be considered late. Okay. So, now the, this will create a worst case condition for the whole violation. Okay. So, till this path you, we have considered early and this is late. So, now we will discuss about the useful skew problem. Okay. So, what we are doing here is that we are applying the linear programming okay, can be used to find the optimal clock arrival time xi at all the sync nodes to satisfy either one of them. Okay. To satisfy uh, either one of them. One uh, objective is to minimize the clock period, okay. minimize the clock period that is LP on, uh, underscore speed actually. And uh, the, the second one is basically we are adding some margin. Okay. So, maximize the safety margin LP safety, maximize the safety margin LP underscore safety. So, both are uh, linear uh, equations. So, we can use a uh, linear uh, programming solver to solve that. So, here uh, what uh, we have is that we have some constant value like setup and hold and we have uh, propagation delay through the uh, combinational logic uh, is denoted by max i comma j mean i comma j this is for setup check uh, this is for setup check and this is for hold check. Okay. Now, between uh, the two uh, um, flip flops or the latches, the minimum uh, sourcing delay is basically uh, t min. Okay. So, then we can formulate the uh, two problems one for the speed, one for the safety. The first one is uh, for the um, speed problem, LP uh, speed actually. What we are doing is uh, determine the clock arrival times xi. So, we are uh, what is the objective here is to find the clock arrival time xi for all sinks to minimize the clock period p. So, minimize the clock period p. Why you are minimizing the clock period? Because I want higher speed. Okay. So, the clock period is minimized and uh, such that we can also find out the all clock arrival times at the input of the all the sink nodes. Okay. So, here we have uh, two constant. One is related to hold. This is related to hold and this is related to setup okay for all nodes all uh, i comma j for all i comma j so now we have uh, one uh, xi which is greater than uh, t min for all i so this can be solved using a uh, linear programming solver now we have a second problem which is called lp underscore safety what uh, it does is that it also the same objective finds the arrival time of the uh, arrival time uh, xi for all the sync nodes actually all the sync nodes are the flip flops and the latches and uh, latches in the design in the design so our objective is to minimize the clock period p okay if uh, clock period will be minimized then that will basically maximize our uh, speed of operation so you have uh, this uh, uh, term is added, these two terms are added in the expression. So, there are uh, several clock uh, routing algorithms are there, uh, we can divide that into two categories, one is called the single phase clock, uh, whenever we are using single phase clock in the system, we have multi phase clock, then you have different algorithm. In case of single phase, we have uh, delay based, we have uh, basically path length based uh, algorithms are there. So, the delay based algorithm will be the exact zero skew method and the second uh, is that uh, methods of means and medians we will discuss, then we will discuss uh, weighted center okay, and geometric uh, matching. So, these are the three basically, basically the path length based optimization algorithms uh, are there which is used for uh, clock tree synthesis. Okay. Uh, basically, we have multi phase uh, uh, clocking is also there. Okay, a square tree based uh, routing is also employed for multi phase clock. Now, we will discuss with H tree uh, based algorithm. Uh, this H tree is basically a self uh, uh, similar uh, fractal structure. Fractal means it is very uh, systematic uh, structure and it, has, it is a detailed structure actually, a geometric uh, structure uh, with exact zero skew due to the due to its symmetry. Okay. So, it has exact uh, zero skew due to its symmetry 
if I do not have any kind of process variation. If the process variation will be there, obviously there will be some variation in the skew. If there is no process variation because of the structure of the H3, it will produce you exactly 0 skew. It is frequently used for top level uh, clock distribution and uh, cannot be employed directly uh, for the entire uh, clock tree due to uh, some of the reasons because we have uh, blockage, okay. some of the places there is blockage, the router cannot route. So, because of the blockage, uh, basically this entire uh, symmetry cannot be maintained, irregularly spaced uh, sync blocks. The flip flops may not be placed in the design uh, in a regular manner and uh, sometimes excessive routing cost because it, uh, it has a symmetry, it also encounter uh, excessive routing costs. Let us discuss this H3 wash algorithm. Uh, in this example, we have 4 uh, sync nodes, these are the sync nodes actually, these are 4 sync nodes are there. Okay. Now, how can we do the? Uh, clock tree uh, synthesis in this case. So, we have uh, these are the locations of the pins, 4 pins and in a uh, routing plane length is uh, 6 actually, uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the width is also 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The, then uh, we have a uh, clock entry point P, P naught. So, this is the clock entry point P naught. So, the clock will enter from uh, to the design at this point. Okay, this is the clock entry point. Now, uh, what we have to do is that in the H tree, uh, the P 1 is connected to P 3. This P 1 is connected to P 3. Okay. Now, we have P 2 is connected to P 4 using a two vertical segments. So, now we will uh, find the midpoint, okay, uh, middle point of these vertical segments. This is the middle point of the vertical segments. Okay. Now, what we are doing that uh, we will find the midpoint uh, P13, uh, 1, 3, P24, 5, 3. These middle points are also called the uh, tapping points actually. Here we do the tapping for the clock tray because we, we need to connect to that point. So, that is that's why it is called tapping points. So, now we will create a another uh, horizontal segment. This horizontal se segment will create a exact edge, exact edge in the layout. Okay. So, so that is why it is called edge tree based algorithm. Okay. So, now what you have to take the uh, middle of so that uh, uh, horizontal segment. Now, we will uh, finally connect the clock entry point P naught to that uh, uh, cent, uh, midpoint of the horizontal segment. So, we can extend the same approach to create several H tree in the design. Okay, if it is a two label H tree uh, design algorithm. So, if you can see here, you have a very interesting points here like uh, let us say I have uh, uh, K, there are two factors are there. K is one factor, N is another factor. How they are related? K is the number of labels in the H tree. In the previous example, number of labels because how many H's are possible? Uh, this first one, uh, this one is one label, okay. This one is one label, okay. And uh, these are the second label. This is a second label. Okay. So, k in this case is 2. So, if k is 2, how many uh, sync nodes is, is possible? Sync nodes means how many number of flip flop it can give the clock signals. So, here it is 4 to the power k is n which is basically uh, number of sync nodes. Okay. So, in this case it will be 4 to the power 2 which is 16. If you can see in the previous example, here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, similarly 8, 8 in other direction. So, here 8, 
here 8. So, together it is 16 sync node nodes or flip flop or latches that are connected to this edge tree which will provide you uh, 0 skew uh, signal to the uh, flip flops. And uh, the total uh, overhead here is basically uh, total well length overhead is basically 3 into uh, the root over of n by 2. And uh, this uh, H tree construction has been extensively used for clock routing in regular systolic arrays also. It is very popular algorithm H tree based uh, um, clock tree synthesis algorithm is very popular in the industry. In this lecture we discuss about the uh, problem statement of the clock tree synthesis. Then we discuss about the H tree based uh, clock tree synthesis algorithm. Thank you for your attention.